you know, I saw some homeless people and also I met a new millionaire the other night. This thing is getting real and it's your choice if you want to participate in the American dream or just sit on the sidelines and let the Great Reset claim you. Okay, guys, we're going to be talking about the American dream. And all that goes along with it. You know, the global reset is on and popping. I saw not one, but two homeless people within five minutes of each other. We didn't have a lot of homeless people out here in Sandy Springs. For years and years and years, it was like two. Now there's like about 20 running around here and growing. The global reset is real. What's going on guys? It's Glendon Cameron here again with Corporate Citizen, where we teach you how to build businesses and we talk about the economy. Today's conversation is going to be about the economy. Man, also, if you want to level up, if you want to run your game, if you want to be a millionaire within the next three years, go ahead, get in the corporate papers, link is below, and the price doesn't change until a little later because I got super, super busy, so I just extended that for folks who wanted to jump in last minute. All right, so Lynette Atkins put up a video talking about the American dream was a hoax. The American dream wasn't real. And I vigorously disagree with Lynette Atkins because I've achieved the American dream. But the American dream has transformed. It used to be, and this is what my uncle did, my uncle up in Detroit, he left Alabama in the 30s, moved to Detroit, and he said within moving to, from Atlanta, Alabama to Detroit, within a year working at, I think he worked at Pontiac, you could literally make enough money to buy a house and start getting a piece of the American dream. If you didn't know, Houses were not that expensive in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. Someone working at a gas station could afford a house back then. And what has happened is the great American dream has transformed. Now, it hasn't transformed for immigrants. I'm going to talk about immigrants. Immigrants come here and they don't speak the language, so they know that they got to start a business. Years and years ago, when I got access to the apparel mart, first thing that jumped out, me, jumped out at me was the number of immigrants running businesses. I mean, that, that's all I ran into on the 7th, the 6th, 7th, and 8th floor. And these were where they sold the jewelry. It was Indians, it was Asians, it was Armenians, and they essentially put themselves in the pipeline to get rich. One of my friends, Sarkis, owns a bank. He's an immigrant who owns a bank. And I feel what has happened, because I was listening to Lynette Atkins and I listened to, you know, her theory that the elites are doing all this to keep the common man down, to keep the common man pressed, to keep the common man working, right? Now, I will share, this is something I, I had a conversation with a Lyft driver the other day, and he said what the Lyft app was doing was making it, they, they, were, they were messing with the app to keep him out longer because he figured it out. So that does happen but it's on a corporate level and you have to be in that corporate system. Because 
if Lynette Atkins' theory was true, how did I go from being homeless to being rich? If Lynette Atkins' theory holds true, how did that happen? If her theory was correct, I should have never been able to climb out of being homeless, to go from being broke, to go from being financially irresponsible, to being rich, to living in a million dollar house, driving a Porsche that's paid off, driving a drop top Benz, and driving a BMW X5M. If Lynette Atkins' theory was 100% correct, how could I get out? Was I the chosen child? Now, I'm about to go ahead and explain to you what has happened. And I've, I've been watching this happen for like the last 12 years. The internet and social media can be very liberating if you it's like a tiger social media is like a tiger if social media is your pet tiger you can pet the tiger you can feed the tiger you can play with the tiger social media is your friend but if social media is not your pet tiger social media can make you depressed social media can be toxic because you will get to see all of these people living these grand and extravagant lives while you're suffering, while you're, I mean, honestly, if social media had been around when I was a bum, I, I just take full accountability. I was a bum back then. I had no clue. I had no direction. I had no response. I, I was just messed up, man. I was just messed up. Social media was around. I may have killed myself because here's the thing. Every day you get up, you go to work and you don't see a measurable impact from month to month, year to year of getting up every day and going to work. You don't feel it. You don't see it. It's like you're in the same position. You don't see appreciation. You don't see acceleration. You don't see uh, ascension. You're ascending. You don't see that work in the regular J-O-B. You just don't. So, after a period of time, you feel trapped, you feel stuck, you feel taken advantage of. And it's because, going back to my boy, Earl Nightingale, you don't understand the game. You don't understand the game. Immigrants understand the game. Immigrants come here, and if it's a Spanish immigrant from Guatemala, El Salvador, most of our Hispanic immigrants are not from Mexico. They're from El Salvador, El Salvador, Guatemala, uh, sometimes Colombia. Very few people are coming here actually from Mexico. But they come here and you will get this guy who will come from El Salvador and he will get an apartment 10 deep, two to a room. They're paying, you know, and they're working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And they're only paying a little bit of their money to live because they're sharing living responsibilities. Immigrants know the game very, immigrants was house hacking before house hacking became a thing. You know, all of a sudden you got all these white people like, yeah, I'm house hacking. Immigrants been house hacking since day one. Immigrants been doing that. You know, it's kind of funny. It's like when something that a group of people who are not in power are doing, it's not looked upon to be what it is. But once the group in power, white people, um, they go ahead and they start doing it. Then it becomes this thing. It's like house hacking is the best thing ever. Immigrants been house hacking since immigrants started coming to America in the twenties. They had boarding houses, they had communities, they had, they, 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 they've been house hacking since day one, right? So here's where the average indigenous American has a problem. The average American, number one, doesn't seek out information. That's the number of the first thing. They don't look for information. The average American is programmed through television, through social media. Remember what I said about the pet tiger. If you are an influencer and you could go, you got like a million followers and you could go ahead and drop, hey guys, go here to this website and make 30 bands just like that. Social media is your tiger. 
But if you're one of the people who, who are on the outside of the social media with your face pressed against the glass and you're looking around and you're going like, how come I can't get in? I'm about to tell you why you can't get in. You don't know the game. You don't understand the game. You feel that you can be, you know, going back to my uncle, uh, Willie Ham. Those days are over where you can get a job, get a pension, buy a house, get married, have a family, live on one income. Those days are gone. They're gone. And this is where the global reset comes into play. Because once again, the average American is not about hustling. The average American is not about elevation. The average American is not seeking out new um, ways to make money. The average American is seeking comfort, pleasure, and freedom. Once again, the average American is seeking comfort, pleasure, and freedom. This is why someone who wins the lottery will go out and buy a bunch of coke and get high and get a bunch of prostitutes and have sex versus going out and buying an apartment building because they're seeking comfort, pleasure, and freedom. And this is how many of these internet guys market their products to you with comfort, freedom, and pleasure. And they don't tell you the truth about how America, the game of America, the game of America has not changed, but the, man, the number of people who are playing the game has changed. And a lot of people have checked out due to this pandemic. With this pandemic, a lot of people got used to having time freedom. They got used to being able to sit at home, play video games, watch television, have sex, do drugs, and bam, bam, bam. The, the landlord didn't knock on the door because the landlord couldn't evict you. The repo man stopped repoing and the government gave out dribs and drabs of stimulus money. And once again, now winter is coming. Game of Thrones, not Kevin Samuels. Once again, winter is coming. Uh, people are shook because the STEMI economy is gone. The STEMI economy is gone. Uh, once again, confession. I got in the car rental business during the STEMI economy, and what is happening is the real economy is presenting itself, and I have to make adjustments with my car rental business. Thank God I paid cash for all those cars. Because right now, I've got I had eight, I read it out to the day, six, one, two in the shop. I've got eight cars in. I have three cars wrecked. So that's 11 cars. So I have 20 cars rented. And I consistently was having like 22 to 24 to 25. And right now I got to adjust my pricing again because winter is coming. Winter is coming. And once again, for those who are uninitiated, who don't understand the economics, I got a banging video over here at Savage Finance, check it out, that's talking about how to get rich. Here's the thing. In 2021, October, if you start on this plan, you can get rich in America. But you cannot get rich being comfortable. That's the big hiccup. That's the big Ooh, the big gotcha, the big aha moment. Um, I have friends who have businesses who also had jobs and they ain't quit their jobs. They kept their jobs until their business was three, five, six, seven years old. And then they quit their jobs. Right now, and like once again, what I'm going through with the car rental business, I had someone bring a car back. It was a disaster. The car was wrecked. The car had flat tire. And you know, people are like that's a lot of trouble for a entrepreneur who's ready to play a game. That's just business. Like over these last six months, when I saw that car, I didn't get mad. I didn't get emotional. I was just like, I started calculating. I was like, I went, <clears throat> first thing I did, I went to Amazon. I can get that grill for 35 bucks. 
wash the car, rent it out. I'm not fixing the dent. My mind started calculating like, okay, how much is this gonna cost me? About 1200 bucks. The car is made 35, 3600. We're still ahead and it's a pretty decent car and we can just go ahead and put this bad boy out. Just put it out. Just the pricing, put it out. And that car will rent out and we'll continue to make money. Because like I said, I have learned the game. And see, while a lot of you are failing is, you have not learned the game. You've not learned the game. And here's the thing. I'm telling you the game. Uh, shout out to Anton Daniels. Anton, uh, the more I consume his content, the more I see that we think very much alike. He's talking about if you have a job, you should get a second job. He's talking about working. And once again, that's pretty much been my message with the corporate papers, the corporate toolbox. Hey, you got a job and you go start a business. Guess what? You ain't quitting your job, man. And th this is the thing. Americans are seeking comfort, pleasure, and freedom. <clears throat> and that's why you are messing up the bag. This is why you're fumbling the bag because you're not playing the game correctly. I mean, the ref is throwing all kinds of flags on your game. Uh, out of bounds, er, throwing the flag, throwing the flag. The ref is blowing the whistle all day long on your game because you're not playing the game correctly. Because you want to be comfortable, you want to have pleasure, and you want to be free. And you're chasing that versus doing the things <clears throat> that you need to do to actually realize the American dream. The American dream, once again, um, Lynette Atkins. I vigorously disagree because I am 54 years old and I went from being homeless to rich here in the East United States of America. Nowhere else could that have happened. Nowhere else. So the American dream is very much alive and well if you understand the game that you have to play. If you understand the game, you understand the rules, and you start playing the game, and you play by the rules, you can win. But as long as you are being a narcissist, and like, I don't want to work hard, I don't want to work at this company, I don't want to work this soul-sucking job, okay, fair enough. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to start a business? Are you going to free yourself? I pay myself. I write my own paycheck. You can do it too if you want to play the game. If you would stop seeking comfort, pleasure, and freedom. And the lack of responsibility. I don't want to be responsible for nothing. I don't want to be beholden to anyone. I just want to do me, whatever that means. But see, if you were to play the game, the way the game, I'm about to lay out the game. Number one, you got to work. That's part of the game. All of these billionaires, you know, some of them inherited their money, so they didn't really have to work. There are some of the people on the billionaire list, like the BMW Harris, they inherit their money. They didn't have to work. The Walmart heirs, they inherited that money. They didn't have to work. But you, you don't have a Sam Walton as your daddy. <laughs> you got to work. And one of the things that I, I really want to in fusing you guys I want you to understand is many of you have the wrong mindset you feel that starting a business should be easy and effortless and the money should just come and in my time I've had some businesses where I just like turn the dial and it was like splash splash cash just raining out the sky and once again as a business owner you know there's seasons Last year was a great season for me. This year, it's good. It's back to normal. And see, what this, this slowing of the economy and the global reset, what you're going to see is a lot of people who were living like this, they're going to live like this. They're going to be from here, they're going to go down. Because they don't understand the game, they don't know the game, they don't know how to play the name. They don't know how to play the game. Because going to college, working for a corporation, you know, the rules of, be, of, of America have changed. They, you know, and it started in the 70s. 
You know when they started? When they got rid of that pension and replaced it with a 401k. That happened in the 70s. And this is something else too. A lot of people who have jobs with pensions, many of these pension funds are in trouble. The Kentucky pension fund is like a hundred billy short of what they need to fulfill their, their future obligations. So a lot of these pension plans went the way of the dodo bird. They, they are they in trouble. But once again, if you understand the game of America and it, to get rich in America, you got to start a business. Immigrants know that immigrants come off the boat and they're like, you mean I can start a business? I can just go and get me an LLC, a business bank account and hang up my sign and I'm in business. Oh my God, this place is beautiful. This place is, this place is amazing because they can't do that back home. They can't do that back home. So they come here, they go ahead and they quickly understand the game of America. Start a business, buy some property, hire people. They understand the game. But if you don't understand the game, and, and once again, many of you don't want to play the game. Many of you are lazy. I'm just going to keep it a buck. Many of you are lazy and you don't want to work. You don't want to be responsible and you don't want to play the game. And that's all well and good, but here's the thing. Stop complaining. Stop complaining about America sucks. Stop complaining about the elites. They're keeping us down. The elites have nothing to do. You know what the elite's doing right now? The elite is on his yacht getting his dick sucked. That's what the elite is doing. He ain't even worried. He ain't even thinking about you. He ain't like, oh yes, we got all the unwatched. He ain't even thinking about you. Okay. All right. He ain't even thinking about you. He getting his back rubbed. He's drinking his champagne. He's on his private jet. Jot getting on off his private jet. He ain't even thinking about you as a member of the unwashed masses. Ain't even thinking about you. Not even worried about you. You ain't even on his radar. So he ain't trying to keep you down. He getting his dick sucked. He's, he's, he's coming in this young sugar baby's mouth like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh. He ain't thinking about you. He ain't thinking about keeping you down. He ain't thinking about keeping you in some systematic oppression. What's keeping you in what you feel is systematic oppression is damn laziness. If you would get up, outcast get up get out and get something your life would change if today you started doing something other than playing video games other than seeking comfort pleasure and freedom and running away from responsibility your life would change your life would change but once again you don't understand the game and there are some of you who do understand the game there are some of you who know the game but you don't want to play because that requires you to work. Once again, many of you don't understand the game of America. The American dream ain't dead. It's alive and well. It is alive and well. However, the American spirit is dead. I want you to think, 1940s, during World War II, this country came together like it never came before. There was rations, you had to go with your coupons to get milk. You, there was a metal rations because all this stuff was going to the war effort. And Americans came together and they supported the troops, they supported the cause, and we won that war. Now, I would be really, really scared if we had a World War III because I know that the America of the 40s doesn't exist anymore because people be like, there would be some people like, yeah, let them win. Let them win. We don't need to fight them. Let them invade us. <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't feel like clocking in. I don't feel like shooting no rifle. Man, I don't, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. So if there was a World War III, we would be in trouble because 
we do not have that collective American spirit. We just don't. We have a bunch of narcissistic, hedonistic, um, freedom seekers who are seeking self-satisfaction and pleasure and comfort. They don't want to be bothered. Like, this is a big thing. Like, the other day, I cleaned out my voicemail. I actually checked my voicemail. A lot of people don't. I ever call someone to try to leave a voicemail and their voicemail is full because they have not taken the time to listen to their voice messages? It's little stuff like that that tells you what's going on with a person. How many businesses have you called to leave a message in the voicemail and the voicemail is full? People do not do the little things. They just don't. So the American dream, once again, it's not dead. It's alive. It's right there waiting for people who want it. If you want the American dream, if you want to buy a big ass house, you want to drive some luxury cars and you want to send your kids to college, you can do it. You can't do it living in comfort. You can't do it playing video games. You can't do it hanging out with your friends. But if you want to assume some additional responsibility, I mean, you can, you can, you can do many, many things here in America. And I'm talking about quick within three years, not a few weeks or a few months, which is the folks who are looking for comfort and pleasure. I don't want to be uncomfortable for three years, man. Miss me with that. I'm going to go hit this blunt. I'll holler at you later. And that's America because uh, one of the things is um, one of the girls from Dayton lives in the high rise and a lot of people are smoking weed. And I'm not going to have the cannabis conversation. I'm just like so many people are seeking pleasure, comfort, getting high, seeking freedom, and they don't want to be held accountable. Like the guy who, who jacked up my car the other day. He's like, I didn't do nothing. The rim is bent, homie. You hit something. And when we were having this conversation, I was like, look, dude, you ran over something. He's like, it's a bad tire. I get the car back. I see the rim is bent. The strut is blown out, which means that he just didn't hit something. He hit something hard. He could not, I mean, that, you could not ignore the fact that you ran over something that hard. You hit something hard. It bent the oil pan. He ran over something, but he like, it's a bad tire. The, la the stunning lack of accountability when people do stuff. And uh, this is one of the reasons I'm getting ready to tighten up my policy because I have not rented a car to a young person in a few weeks. I just instantly deny them because this class of people is the most unaccountable class of people in the world. They don't want to assume responsibility. They will do something, they will mess something up, and then they will first thing they scream, I didn't do nothing. And that's what's going on with America. And this is why this global reset is gonna reap a lot of people. Right now, there's a lot of people who don't wanna work. Uh, I go to restaurants that are closed because people don't wanna show up to work. And what's gonna happen right now, these folks got to that government stimulus money. The STEMI economy dead, the STEMI economy gone, right? And I predict in six to 12 months, you're going to see a big change in this situation. You're going to see a huge, huge turnaround because see, I used to play football, right? And you know what they used to do when you would mess up and miss your tackling assignments? They make you run laps. And man, the first few laps, they okay. But that 30th lap, that 40th lap, you suck and win. You start to feel some pain. And pain adjusts behavior. And once these people start feeling some pain, and they're not going to adjust their behavior until they start feeling pain. But once they start feeling that pain, once they start really, really feeling that pain, this is going to adjust their behavior. And this is when they're going to start looking for these jobs. But guess what? Uh, I give corporate America 12 months and 12, in the next five years when you walk into a restaurant it's going to be a kiosk and what they're going to do for drive through it's going to be a touch screen kiosk it's like there you're going to drive up and it's going to be an automated voice that's going to say please pick your selection please press the screen and you're going to go like do 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 and then you're going to drive up to the window and your food's going to slide out a tray
That's what's coming. That's what's coming. And a lot of you, um, once again, it's about skill sets. Like, I never even worked fast food when I was in high school. <laughs> I was working in a machine shop. So, once again, there's going to be a group of people, the great left behind, the people who are going to get globally reset, the folks who used to live in the house, they're going to go from living in a house to renting an apartment to some people are going to go from renting a house to living in a room. Let me go ahead and say this. They're going to go from having their own house to renting a room because that's all they're going to be able to afford. That's it. They're not even going to be able to, be able to rent an apartment. They're going to have to rent a room. They're going to be living with people. And this is going to happen really, really quick. About a year. You're going to have someone last year that had their own house, had their own car, was living in La Vida La Volca. Now they're living in a room with roommates. And they're complaining about where they're parking their car because they don't have enough space to park their car. This is the global reset. You're going to have people going down, 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 down. And you're going to have a smaller group of folks who are going to embrace the American dream and realize I got to start a business and they're going to start the business. And while you, you're going to have a part of America just going down and you're going to have another part of America going up and it's going to happen simultaneously. You're going to have people out here talking about, man, it's so hard out here. I can't find a job. I'm struggling. I, I can't make no money. And you're going to have people out here like, man, I was on the yacht, right? <laughs> I met this little sugar baby. <laughs> woo -woo! Woo -woo! <laughs> yeah, my ball's empty now. And this is going to happen in the same America. You're going to have people over here who are going to be struggling. Like once again, this morning, I, I was on the way to my office and I saw two homeless people. I am not accustomed to seeing homeless people in Sandy Springs. But part of the global reset, they're gonna be here. There's probably 20 or 30 of them roaming around here. And in the next five years, there's probably gonna be about 100. Because they're like, hey, I don't get how, because like the Sandy Springs police, they don't hassle you unless you actually break in the law. Because <laughs> they're dealing with a very affluent population. And it's like, Hey, unless you're actually doing something, they don't mess with you. And the homeless folks are like, oh, <laughs> wait a minute. I can go up to Sandy Springs and I can chill off in the ditch. And they, they don't, the police around here are not used to harassing people. We don't have a lock them up, a lock and frisk policy in Sandy Springs. So this is, you know, because the first homeless person that came here and he was like, man, because this is cracks me up. Homeless people have cell phones. It cracks me up. I don't know how they pay their cell phone bill, but they have cell phones. And he's like, man, I'm up here in Sandy Springs, man. And I've been up here for two months and I, I'm not getting hassled. You should come on up. And they sent out the, the bat signal and all the homeless people are coming to Sandy Springs. And uh, you see a big, big shift. But once again, you're going to have a sector of America going down and you're going to have a sector of America rising. And uh, it's, it's, it's all about choice, man. It's all about choice. You make the decision on where you want to fit in. It's on you. It, that, that's 100%. It's 100% on you. It's 100% on you. And once again, personal accountability. People don't want to take personal accountability. So once again, you got a choice. You can get bitten out. I don't want to start no business, man. I want to be an investor, man. I want to be an investor. You don't have shit to invest with, motherfucker. Stop it. Just stop it. You need to be putting away minimum $25,000 a year to become a millionaire in 20, 25 years. That's the kind of money you need to be putting away to become rich as a, an investor. Once again, guys, you can play the game or the game going to play you. That's pretty much what it is. You can listen to all of these shysters, all these template business leaders who are like, hey, you should start a, a Toro business. Uh, Toro has tanked in Atlanta. Toro has slowed way down in Atlanta. And I've I'm, I'm been seeing a lot of people in like, yo, Toro slowed down. You know what's next? Airbnb, gonna slow down. And what you're gonna see is the 
evaporation of the stimulus money. Then once all that stimulus money gets out the economy, it's going to be back to normal and it's going to dip. And then we're going to have winter game of Thrones. We're going to have winter for the unprepared, for the people who don't want to play the game. We're going to have winter for the folks who don't want to be accountable. We're going to have winter for the folks who don't want to start a business. We're going to have winters for the folks who don't want to get two and three jobs. See, this is the season to prepare. This is the season to plant your seeds. This is the season. Right now is the time to plant seeds so you can eat next year. But a lot of y'all don't get that because you're looking for immediate gratification, comfort, pleasure, and freedom. That's what you're looking for right now. Uh, years ago when I was a bum, I was in that boarding house and one morning I was in the mirror and I looked at myself and I got very, very disgusted at myself. I was like, bro, you gotta change. And at that moment, I started to change my thinking, I started to change my behavior, and look where I'm at now. Where I'm at now started in that bathroom. And many of you don't get it. Many of you wanna keep playing stupid and like, okay. And when the great reset resets your ass and you go from living in the house to living in a room because you don't have no money, Remember who told you this was coming? Because some of you who are listening to this message right now, you're going to get reset. You don't have to get reset, but because you don't want to make the proper moves, you don't want to take action. Like, let, let me go ahead and just say it. I gave away free courses on how to make money for six months, and the majority of people who took those courses didn't take action. These are the people who are going to get reset. Once again, I'm going to be living the American dream. I'm going to be, I don't know if I'm going to get a yacht. That's not one of my, that's not on my hit list. But the high rise condo, yeah, empty balls all day long. Empty balls all day long. Because uh, I recently checked the Sugar Baby Index. And man, 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 winter is coming. There are more 30 some year old women, 40 some year old than I've ever seen before. And I've only been doing this like two years. Like when I first jumped on there, there was nothing but young, foolish chicks. And now there's a bunch of seasoned women because winter is coming. <laughs> winter is coming. And there are going to be a lot of chicks doing something strange for a little change. They're going to be taking that old man dick. They're going to be taking it in the mouth, the pussy and the ass to get that little, get that money. They're gonna be doing it. It's coming, it's coming. I said it before many years ago, the price of pussy is at an all time low. <laughs> it used to be, you used to have to lay siege to a foreign land. You had to get on the ship and sail to America to get some pussy. Now, <laughs> you, could, you could send a text. Hey, what you doing? What's good, Ma? What that mouth do? And you be in. It's totally changed. But guys, I just want to say the American dream is not dead, not even close to dead. It's just a matter of perspective and a matter of taking action. And if you want to be action, like during all of this catastrophe, you're going to have people starting businesses. And like I said, you're going to have people going down. And you're going to have people coming up. So it's your decision. You want to be going, you want to be one of the people reset. We're going to the basement or we're going to the penthouse. It's your choice. It's your choice. What you going to do? That's all I got for you. Hopefully you heard me. Hopefully you heard me. So go ahead and get in the corporate papers and I will see you. Man, that's going to be happening pretty quick. I don't even know if this video is going to be live. But once again, if you miss the uh, live training, it's recorded and you can get that. So just jump in the corporate papers and I will talk to you guys later.